Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton Infertility Centre in London. Today, we look at a slightly different topic, which I do not think has been covered by me till now. It's again looking at AMH, which is the anti-millerian hormone, understanding its physiology slightly better, and seeing what happens to anti-millerian hormone in pregnancy. Again, in pregnancy, which means when a woman falls pregnant, what happens to the AMH levels? This was a paper written in 2013, which looked at anti millerian hormone levels during pregnancy and postpartum. What do we know about AMH? The anti millerian hormone is produced by granulosa cells of the small preantral and small antral follicles. The quantity of AMH corresponds to the pool of these follicles. Now the most important thing is that the AMH inhibits follicle growth. And I want everyone to understand that if you understand the role of AMH, your stimulation protocols will get better. If you use it as an ovarian reserve test, to deny patient's treatment, it is not going to work effectively. Its use is to understand what it does. And it inhibits follicular growth. It tells you a lot about follicular resistance and grounds our cell resistance. And it is an FSH dependent process. Clinical pregnancy rates we know now do not correlate with the level of AMH. Again, in an earlier talk which I had done, it demonst demonstrated that the level of AMH was she did not seem to correlate with natural conception. We still do not know what happened with extremely low AMH levels. Now, what, is, what was the aim of this study? The aim of this study was, do AMH levels decline with age or do hormones in pregnancy have an impact? AMH levels to determine age-dependent decline in a cohort of pregnant women without fertility impairment. What happens to AMH through pregnancy and postpartum? Remember, pregnancy is probably the most profound hypogonadotrophic phase that a woman passes through in her childbearing age group. 554 women, 16 to 47 years, no infertility, no surgery on the ovaries, conceived naturally. AMH studies were done prospectively in the third trimester from 2011 to 2012. And retrospective analysis was done between first and the second trimester. 69 women were studied postpartum. Let's look at the AMH levels. If you see across all the boards, the AMH levels started declining in each trimester. In women, Less than 27 years, the decline of AMH was dramatic, was much lower. Thus, between the first and the second trimester, the decrease was dramatic. Look at it from those between 28 to 34, 35, that dramatic drop continues, though it is less profound as a woman gets older. What the study tells us is that AMH declines with increasing gestational age. We, the study also tells us that the AMH declines postpartum. The AMH levels in pregnancy, what the study tells us is that there's a significant decline of AMH with increasing gestational age. It is also age related. In women who are younger, they would have a higher AMH when they got pregnant. The decline of AMH is much more dramatic and steeper. As women got older, their AMH from the start was lower, the decline was less profound. It seems that an approximately 50% decline of AMH can be observed during pregnancy. We also know 
from this study and some other studies that AMH also declines postpartum. And that is something surprising. It seems to drop again post-delivery for the loss of the placenta. And then from day four, it seems to come back to the pre-delivery levels, though still very low. Again, it does not seem to correlate with that large pool of, of resting follicles, which basically means that even this dramatic drop that occurs, it gives us a false idea that the small follicles are not there while they are there. And for some reason, we can't, still can't measure them. It seems that folliculogenesis in pregnancy is inhibited. Even the primordial follicles go into a resting phase. It seems that AMH is no longer produced by many of these follicles. Hormones that, such as estrogen, progesterone and other placental factors may further cause suppression of the ovary. Post-delivery, the FSH is profoundly suppressed and including that there may be a role of follistatin which increases during pregnancy and starts increasing after delivery. Why is this important? Often you'll see patients coming in and saying, I've had a baby, I want to get on with my second child. We start measuring the AMH two months, three months after delivery, rare, and we see a dramatic drop. The question still needs to be answered is, when can a woman start treatment again? Do those rules of AMH give a false idea? And, and as I sh showed in the earlier talk with the pill, yes, I, this clearly the AMH is suppressed. How much impact does breastfeeding have? And there has to be a certain amount of impact with breastfeeding. And as the AMH levels decline, do we give it time for the reversal to take place? Remember, there's an age-related decline that also occurs with AMH. Somebody at 34 or 35 who has a first child and then comes at 37 or 38 for a second child will have two factors. One, pregnancy itself, which has lowered AMH, which hopefully will recover, but that recovery is also age-dependent. And that's something which has to be realized. And this topic paper rather slightly moves away from the general treatment aspect. It concentrates more on physiology, on natural physiology, on how hormone levels change. And that is why it is extremely, an extremely important paper that improves our understanding. Thank you.